If you're building applications on the AWS infrastructure, then AWS Secrets Manager provides a centralized and secure storage for your sensitive information. Secrets can be any information like passwords, connection strings, API keys, credentials, etc. In a previous video, we learned how to integrate with AWS Secrets Manager from a .NET application. We learned how to integrate the Secrets Manager as a configuration provider and seamlessly use the secrets from the application code. In this video, let's take it a step further and see how we can integrate the Secrets Manager throughout the lifetime of an application. It's typical for an application to be deployed to multiple environments. Usually, these are test, UAT, prod, etc. In these cases, all of these will need to connect with Secrets Manager and have separate values based on the environment that it's connecting in. But if all your applications are deployed to a single AWS account, in this case, it can become a bit tricky. This is because the Secrets Manager is global and only has one instance per your account. So if all of these applications has to connect to the same Secrets Manager, we will have to make sure to organize the secrets in such a way that the applications can filter them out and connect as required. We will learn exactly how to do that in this video. Hello everyone, welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Rahul and I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. Without much delay, let's learn how to integrate Secrets Manager in a real world application throughout its lifetime and in different environments. Here we have the application code which we used in our previous video. We have the program.cs, the weather forecast and the weather forecast controller. We set up the integration for Secrets Manager in our configuration as a configuration source. We added it as an add Secrets Manager, which comes from the NuGet package that we added. This also specifies the key generator, which replaces the key to match the key names as in our .NET configuration. We also set up the polling interval to be 20 seconds. Now, if it is in a local development environment, this uses the .NET secret manager. However, for now, the launch settings has a value test, which means this is not the development environment and it will be using the secrets manager. The values is injected as an options pattern using the weather forecast options class, which has two properties, the count and the API key. And this is injected into our controller. So you can see this gets injected in our constructor and then we are using it inside our code. We use the count to determine the number of records to return back and also we specify the API key as a summary. This is purely for demo purposes. These configurations would be used in real world cases like connecting to an external API, databases, etc. So the application is running. So if we navigate to the Swagger UI, navigate to get weather forecast, and click try it out and execute, we can see this in action. Now the value for these options is coming from AWS Secrets Manager. So let's press F5 and this responds back with the API data. Now let's see behind the scenes what is happening with this application when we connect with AWS Secrets Manager. So let's stop this application, open an application Fiddler, which is used as a web debugging proxy. Now I have already installed the standalone version for Fedler, which I will put a link below in the description. Now, as you can see, this is already tracking all the network requests that's happening from my computer. But let's clear this and let's just focus on the ones that we are interested. So this will keep capturing all the requests, but once we run the application, I'll call out the specific ones. So let's run the application again. On the launch, this is going to hit the secrets manager and retrieve all the keys. Now, if we go into Fiddler, we can see these calls in here. So we can see all the calls that's made to secrets manager .ap .southeast, which is the region where I have the secrets manager defined. Now let's select this, double click that, and it shows all the details of that request on the right side. So let's look at the raw version and we can see this is the call to list all the secrets. So this first call lists all the secrets from AWS Secrets Manager. If we click the JSON view, we can see this in full detail. So here we have all the keys that's defined in our Secrets Manager. Now in this particular case, I have the my secret, weather forecast underscore count, and the weather forecast underscore API. 
So if we navigate to the AWS Secrets Manager, we can see the three keys here inside our Secrets Manager. So once it retrieves all the keys, so once it lists all the secrets, it makes independent calls to retrieve each of these secrets value. Now in this particular case, you can see it is also requesting for my secret, the weather forecast underscore count and the weather forecast underscore API key. It is these independent calls that actually retrieves the secret value for that specific key. The application is making a call to retrieve all the secrets. Now this works fine if the secrets manager is an instance specific for your application. However, this is normally not the case. The secrets manager is global inside your AWS account and you would be having different keys for different applications in here. Now we want to restrict the keys that is getting used by each of our applications. So let's see how we can do that. So when we create secrets inside AWS Secrets Manager, we will have to make sure we follow a convention. Now, if this Secrets Manager is supposed to hold secrets for different environments, let's say test and production, we will need a way to specify the environment in the key. So for example, let's use slash and specify the environment name as the first part. Now, since we have different applications inside this Secrets Manager, we will also have to further filter this out by the application name. So let's specify the application name as the next section. Once both of these are specified, we can specify the actual key that we will be using. In this particular case, we will be using weather forecast underscore underscore count for example. In this particular case, we can have one key as test slash the app name as weather app slash weather forecast underscore underscore count. This is specifically for the test environment and for the prod environment, it will be prod underscore weather app. Now there might be cases where you want to share specific keys across environments. So let's say there is a connection string to your database, which is used by different applications. In these cases, you could put these values inside a shared app. So let's say instead of weather app, we can specify this as shared. Now these naming conventions is completely up to you and your team to decide, but you will have to determine and find a convention that works across your teams and in your organization in general. Once you have this identified, we can use this inside our secrets manager. So let's come back to our secrets manager. Let's create two keys. Let's say we'll create the slash test. So let's create a new secret, other type of secret, plain text. Let's specify the value three and click next. In the name, you can already see the hint specifies a similar format. It has prod slash app beta and my SQL. So let's use the same format. So let's remove the leading slash and simply specify test, weather app and weather forecast count. So this means we'll be removing the leading slash from everywhere, just like the example that was shown. So let's come back here and click next. Let's turn off automatic rotation, click next and click store to create the new key. Now we have a new secret that is created as per this naming convention. So we have test slash weather app weather forecast underscore underscore count. Let's also create a new one. Let's say plain text. Let's specify this as test AWS secrets manager API key and click next. Let's make sure to use the correct naming. So let's specify test. In this particular case, let's say this is a shared key. So let's specify this as shared and then use this as API key and click next. Let's leave everything as default and click store secret. So we have a test weather app specific key and we also have a test and which is shared across different applications and that is the API key. With this setup, now if I was to come back to our application and run this again, so let's stop and run this again. Let's clear Fiddler. Let's remove the debug breakpoint and if we come back to Fiddler, we can see there are now much more calls that's made to Secrets Manager. If you look at the first call, this returns all the keys that we have just added, including the test weather app, weather forecast count. In this particular case, we can see it makes further calls to retrieve each of these values. 
Now we need a way to filter these values that's specific for this application. So let's come back to our application. Let's stop this and inside our add secrets manager where we specify the config, we can also specify a secret filter. Now this is the filter that will be used to filter the secrets that is relevant for this application. This takes in a function which takes the secret list entry and returns a boolean. So let's take the secret and return a boolean from this particular name. Now we need to make sure that this secret's name is belonging to this particular pattern. So we have the environment name, the app name, which is constant for this application, or it can be also using the shared name. So let's specify an allowed list of values that can be used. So in the else statement, let's make sure to add a bracket. Let's specify allowed prefix as a property and let's simply specify an array of strings. Now in this particular case, one of them is going to have the environment name. So let's use string interpolation. Let's specify builder.environment.environment name. Let's specify the weather app as a hardcoded string and specify the slash. The other value that's supported is similarly, let's use string interpolation, builder.environment.environment name, and also this can have shared values. So let's specify that as well. Now these are the allowed prefixes. So let's make sure that this secret name contains in this allowed prefix. So let's say allowed prefix dot any, which is for allowed. And let's make sure the secret dot name dot starts with this allowed prefix. So let's specify allowed. Now all this is doing is checking if the secret's name starts with any of these allowed prefixes. Now if it succeeds this case, then it gets filtered for this application. Now since the key names have this prefix in them, we will have to make sure to remove it inside the key generator. Now here we are automatically replacing an underscore with a colon, but we'll also have to make sure we strip off the prefix. So in this case, let's expand this function. Let's identify which prefix it's using, allowed prefix dot first and check which prefix it's getting used. So let's specify name dot starts with and the prefix that is getting passed. So here we know which prefix is getting used and let's also replace that prefix with an empty string. So let's specify replace prefix with string dot empty and let's return this as the key name. So here you can see we are first identifying the prefix that's being used. So we are going through the allowed prefix, finding which one the name starts with and using that to replace this particular prefix from the key. So we can put a breakpoint here to see this in action. So let's run this again and see how this works. So let's clear the fiddler, come back and press F5. Now when the application starts, it's going to filter the keys based on this particular allowed prefix. And now you can see the key generator is being called. So if you look at the name, we can see this has the test weather app or the forecast count. So the prefix right now is test slash weather app. So once that is replaced, the name would just be the weather forecast colon count. So let's continue the execution and see what's happening in Fiddler. Now, if we come back here, we can see that there is one call which is made to get the list secrets, which returns all the secrets, but this is then filtered and the subsequent calls is only made for the test weather app and the one that is for test weather app and API key. So when we make the list call, it filters out all the other secrets that starts with other values. And it takes only the ones that's for test slash weather app and test slash shared. Now, if we come into our API, make get, try it out and click execute. Let's add a quick watch and we can see this is getting test AWS secrets manager and returns the value three as expected. Let's stop this. Let's come to our solution explorer, launch settings and make this test as prod. Let's also update this as production. Now this is going to look for production environment keys. So let's come back into our secrets manager. Let's store a new secret. 
we'll have to use the same format. So in this particular case, this is going to be prod slash weather forecast and then specify the count. So let's copy that. Let's specify other plain text. And for prod, let's say it returns 50 data and click next. Let's specify the name. So this is prod slash weather app, weather forecast underscore underscore count. Let's click next, leave all the options as default and click store. Let's also make sure we specify one for the API key. So let's create a new secret. Let's see other plain text and let's specify production API key from AWS secrets manager. Let's click next. Let's specify the value here. So this is using prod. Now, since this comes from shared, we can use shared and specify this as API key. Click next, next and store. So we have both the prod keys specified very similar to our test environments. So if we come back to our application, let's put a breakpoint here and run this to see this in action. So once the application starts up, we can see the environment name is prod and the allowed prefix has the prod values. So let's run this. And if we navigate to Fiddler, we can see this again makes a call to the list secrets, gets all the secrets, and then the subsequent calls is filtered by the prod keys. So if you see here, the name is prod slash weather app. And the next one is prod slash shared for the API key. So this is filtering for the specific environment that this application is launching on. Now, if we go back to our API, let's click the get weather forecast, try it out and click execute. This time the count is 50 and let's press F5 and we can see the results back in the summary, which is going to be production API key from AWS secrets manager. Let's go back to secrets manager. Let's update this count for the production environment. So let's say retrieve secret value and let's say edit and change this value to be 25 and click save. Now, if we keep a look at Fiddler, we can see this is constantly polling for our timeout that we have specified for the polling interval, which in this particular case is 20 seconds. So you can see that as the polling interval setting here. So if you look at Fiddler, we can see every now and then there's requests made to secret manager. So when the next request is made, it still makes all the calls based on the list call and the subsequent calls for each of these secrets. Now you can see the secrets value is 25 here, which will be updated in our application config and which will reflect in the next request. So if you come back to the API, click execute, the count will now be 25 and it is automatically refreshed it from the secrets manager. I hope this helps you to understand how to set up the AWS Secrets Manager in a real world application. Now, if you have different applications connecting, you can use a similar naming strategy and manage your secrets in your AWS Secrets Manager. In some cases, you might have your different environments split across different AWS accounts. In these cases, this is much more easier because the Secrets Manager will be specific to your environment. In this case, you only need to share the secrets between different applications, which would still be connecting to the same secrets manager, which are all running in the same environment. Make sure you do not hard code your credentials in your application and use AWS secrets manager to externalize and manage this in a centralized and a secure place. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon.